Right, I think I'm finally ready now to start getting this engine back together. Both surfaces are clean, the block is clean, the head is clean, and all that can mean is that the engine can go back together. I'm gonna to sling the new head gasket on here, um, hang the chain up again by the bonnet like I did before, put the head on, put the new head bolts in. I'm not gonna tighten it down properly yet until I get the engine mount on, and then just go up my list, the reversal of how I took everything off. I'll show you as I go along, but I'm not gonna show you everything like I didn't when I took it all apart. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get this mini engine finally back together. Right, so one thing I need to do before I can start putting this back together, and it's one thing that's actually really overlooked, a lot of people don't even think about it, is cleaning out the head bolt holes. So these big holes here that go around the whole head, where the bolts go that actually hold the head on the engine, um, they can get filled with water, they can get filled with oil, and if you don't clean them out, uh, when you put the head bolts in and you tighten them down, you're going to cause all sorts of issues. You can get stress cracks in the block and all sorts of stuff, so I highly recommend doing it. I just put this piece of tissue down in one of them, and as you can see, there's a load of oil in this one. There was water in this one. Um, these two had oil in them as well. So make sure you go around all these bolt holes, stick a piece of tissue down there or a cotton bud or something like that. And just make sure that there's no oil or water in any of them. New head gasket on. I also managed to find a bungee cord for me chain. Uh, that's what I was looking for last time, but I couldn't find one. But I managed to find one this time. Right, it's time for the head. Right, so quick little update as to where I'm up to. Um, as you can see, the head is on. The head bolts are in. Um, it was a complete fail. I don't know how much you saw on the camera because I didn't really get a very good setup. But getting the chain through the head and then hooking it back on and getting the head situated with the head gasket and all that stuff on my own was an absolute nightmare, honestly. Um, it took me a good few minutes to get it there, but we are in, the head is in. I'm now putting in the uh, chain rails into here but before I do that I'm just going to torque up the head bolts the main ones the big ones so the 10 main ones that go sort of just here they go 40 newton meters and then 90 degrees um, and the small ones down in there they're just 28 uh, newton meters I'm going to tighten them up quickly I can't put the chain guard rails in until the bolts are torqued up so I'm going to do that first chain rails can go back in um, and then I can put the cam sprocket on just in case you're curious as well, that's the tightening pattern for the head bolts. Start in the middle, do like a spiral on the way out, and then finish with the last small two on that side. There you are. Put wrench down to 28 and just do the last two. Right, so next up we've got the cam sprocket. Um, if you remember from when I took it apart, I actually put a little bit of red nail varnish on there. And also, a little bit of red nail, you can't really see it. There's no light, hang on. A little bit of red nail varnish right there on that chain link. So they need to match up and if they do, we've got our sprocket on the right way. Um, and then I might need to move the cam a little bit just to get it in the right place to get the sprocket on, but that is next up. I don't know how well you can see that on there because of the sun, but 
but our red dot is lined up with our red link as you can see um, but the cam just needs to be turned clockwise a tiny bit because it's got a little uh, like pin on it little nipple thing right there which needs to line up with the slot on the cam there um, and they're not quite lining up at the minute I don't know if you can see that so I just need to turn it a little bit to the right and then we should be able to line these up camshaft sprocket bolt 102 newton meters So I don't know if you saw what I just did, but I had to hold the crank bolt, which is right there. I had to hold that like anti-clockwise, and then I was able to do the uh, camshaft bolt up to 102 newton meters. And that is, I think, most of all the sort of important stuff done. I've got to do the head bolts, the 90, the 90 degrees yet. I haven't done that, but the head bolts have all had one torque. Um, the chain rails are in, the cam sprocket is in, bolt is tightened up. I'll just show you one more time that our little red marks are now lined up, right there. You see them? There you go. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I think I just got the camshaft uh, position sensor to go back in. The side there, I've got to put these two plugs back in as well. Little uh, 10 mil Allen key bolts, they go in the side there. And then we can start building this side of the engine back up with the engine mount and all that sort of thing, so. Not too bad at all. Right, so I'm gonna finish up tightening up the head bolts. Um, they've had their 40 newton meters, as you've seen. Um, but to do the 90 degrees, I literally just use a breaker bar like this, long extension, socket down on the on the bolt. And uh, 90 degrees is pretty easy just to guess. Um, it's a quarter of a full turn. Um, so if you start sort of here, you're gonna end up with the bar about sort of this angle. If you can get it straight, then that's awesome. Uh, Cause you can just sort of do from three o'clock to six o'clock, that sort of thing. It's one of those things you just kind of have to get used to do, and I've done it quite a few times now, so uh, pretty good at gauging uh, where it should be. I'm now going to put the chain tensioner back in, um, but you're not going to be able to see this because it's right down there somewhere behind the back of the engine. Um, I've reset it by pushing the little plunger in. This is the plunger at the top here. Um, that pops out and that's what gives the chain tension, but I've just pushed it in to reset it. And then uh, that sort of goes back in like that and tighten it up. And that, that'll pop back out once it gets uh, oil pressure. Right, so I think it's time for a quick little update. Um, I've been out here doing a few bits off camera. Um, we've got the engine mounts both on, on the driver's side. This is sort of made up of two parts, if you remember. Uh, there's the bottom part, which is silver, and the top part, which is black. Just there, got that all bolted up, all tightened down. I said before, when I was doing the um, chain guides, that they, they didn't have a torque value. Um, it turns out they do. It's just down the bottom here. Guide rail, 28 Newton meters. So I did them up and I also did up the Allen key caps that go in the side, which allows you to undo the rails. I did them up as well to 63. Timing chain, tensioner cap, 63 newton meters. So I did all of that up, so don't worry about that. Now I'm just looking at this, just trying to figure out what the next move is. I think maybe the exhaust can go back on. I've got a new gasket for that, which is just down here. Got a brand new uh, exhaust gasket. So I might put that in and stick the exhaust on the back because I don't got to worry about that anymore. Old intake manifold seals, 
new intake manifold seals. A little bit of blue thread lock on the intake manifold bolts as well. Intake manifold bolts, 26. Right, just have a quick little catch up. Hope you guys are following on all right from the putting together the mini. Um, I'm just trying to get it done at this point. Um, I'm filming as much as I can. It's really hard to film in engine bays when you haven't got a second person. Uh, you're constantly having to set the tripod up in really weird areas, trying to get all different angles, like putting the exhaust on. You just can't see most of it. Um, so I'm trying my best, and I apologize if the footage is not amazing. I hope you get the gist of what's happening. We're actually doing really well so far. I'm also paying a lot of attention as to what bolts I've tightened, because in the past when I've put engines back together and I've filmed, I've missed out on bolts that I haven't torqued down properly because I've been worried about getting the right shot. So I hope you guys understand that I'm just trying to get this mini done right and I'm trying to put as much of my attention in it as I can. Now, I'm going to carry on. It's about 7 o'clock in the evening, so I've probably got about half an hour, maybe an hour at the most left this evening to get as much as I can done. I'm just going to finish up plugging in all the stuff that I need to. Um, I did buy a new thermostat. I don't know where I put it, but I bought a brand new thermostat for this car as well, so I'll be sticking that on. And then the valve cover can go on, and it's just a case of just putting the wiring back in um, and stuff like that. We're not actually too far away now from the engine being fully put back together. So, hope you guys are enjoying. Let's carry on. Didn't realize, but I need this little sensor as well. It's the, I think it's the temperature sensor. New thermostat housing. There you go. And a new thermostat. I'm sure the old one was probably all right, but why not change it? Thermostat housing is 12 newton meters. Right, so it is time for the valve cover. Although I did want to clean it out before I put it on, actually, didn't I? I might just give this a quick clean out first, get rid of all that gunky, milky oil. And then I've got a gasket set there to change. Um, there's a gasket that goes all the way around the outside, which is the thin one. And then there's gaskets here for the spark plug tubes, which I'll change out as well. I'll take them out first and then I'll give it a clean. All right, there we go. It's a little bit cleaner than it was. Just gonna stick the new gaskets in it and then we can stick it on the car. Just used a uh, 34 mil socket to hit him in with. Work to treat. Right, she's all ready to fit. Let's go get this on before it gets too dark. Right, so let me catch you up real quick. <laughs> Skip forward quite a bit, I'll admit. Um, I think the last thing you would have seen was me putting the valve cover on. And since then, um, I've put the injector loom all on. Um, I wired up all the stuff that's under this airbox here, put the airbox in, put the battery tray in, the ECU is in and all plugged up. So, 
what is left, you may be asking. Um, spark plugs have to go in, and then these just need to be uh, plumbed into the spark plugs. Uh, the battery's got to go in, and then coolant, oil, and that's kind of it. There's not really a lot left to do. And so with that being said, as you can see, it's now like almost pitch black. It does, looks quite light on the camera, but it's almost pitch black right now. Um, so I'm going to end this one here. Got a ripped glove. I'm tired. I've been out here all day. I think I started at 10 o'clock and it's now like 8 o'clock. Bear in mind, I've been taking it easy and having breaks and stuff like that. But even still, I'm very happy with today's progress. Got pretty much everything done. I'm going to come back out here tomorrow and finish up the bits and pieces, but you won't see that in this video. Um, you'll have to wait until the next video for that, for the actual filling up of the oil, the coolant, and then the start up. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for future content, and I'll see you all in the next one. I've now got to go ahead and clear up this big old mess.